Well, what I'm seeing right now is um, an invasion of uh, you know what we call uh, the tar sands industry right now. So right now, this is all leased out to a bunch of tar sand uh, industry companies. And north of that area, we got uh, this whole area leased out to uh, to a bunch of uranium mining companies. So we got uh, our traditional uh, area that's under attack right now by tar sand industry officials and uh, uranium mining companies. You know, and, and north over here, we got the, the Site C dam that's going to happen in uh, in BC. And if that gets approved, that's going to dry out this whole river over here. So this whole delta will be like a desert. You know, so uh, so if Site C goes through. You know that's gonna uh, totally affect uh, you know what's going on with uh, over here. So it's gonna add on to uh, to more destruction that's happened down south here. So right now there's only about ten or so projects that are right now that are active, but it's it's just a matter of about ten years from now where all these projects are gonna be in full you know production, and when they are you know that's gonna be this river here, the Athabasca River. They might as well just rename that to the Athabasca Creek because uh, the the water that they extract. It's so uh, beyond belief, you know, they're taking water out every single day. They're probably about, a, I, I think uh, in total, the math is probably about 10 million barrels of water a day coming out of, the, coming out of that river. You know, and, and today, this year, is probably the worst year ever in terms of uh, the water level. Because all the elders that I've, that I've talked to so far said that this year has been the worst year ever for, you know, in terms of the water being so low, you know, right now. Um, so next year could be even worse. You know, so signs are out there always. So right now, all I see right now is uh, an invasion of of these corporate enemies, you know, that are coming into our traditional territory and destroying it. Because over here, we got the Burge Mountains, and the Burge Mountains to us are totally sacred. That's like uh, that's like our church. That's our everything right there. And this whole area is, is our is our store. And right now, you know, like our homeland is totally under attack right now by by these uh, these 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 devils, you know. So. Uh, so we're getting attacked by the tar sand people, by, by by uranium mining companies, and by the Site C people, by BC Hydro. You know, they're, so they're coming at us on all different angles. So right now, what I'm looking at is uh, is a map that, if we don't do something about it now, this map is going to be totally different in about a hundred years. You know, that lake will be smaller. That lake will probably disappear. That one will be totally gone. You know, and our reserve will be totally dried right out. And that, that lake there, the Richardson River, or the Richardson Lake, you know, that's where my granny and grandpa hunted and fished and trapped, you know, for years. That whole area, so that area right now is is uh, is what is what we're fight, is fighting for. You know, that, that's the main fight is for this whole area right now. So that's uh, so right now I'm looking at uh, a map that could be altered and changed in a hundred years if we don't do something about it now. And we had it uh, we had it made in black and gray, so it'll show. Um, where the tar sands actually are. Um, this right here, if you can see this line here, is right now up to where they're per, um, presently in developing. They're extracting, they're tearing it up. This is almost like a line of scrimmage where we want it to stop. Because right here is our reserve. And all of these have been leased out already, all for tar sands. In fact, it's missing a couple blocks on this side because they're going after oil shale and I believe diamonds have also been found in there. Right here is Fort McMurray. There's Fort Mackay right in the dead center of it. And this is all being mined already. Um, all this is in situ. And uh, SAG D, which is because the uh, tar sands, the, sand, the oil is so far down they have to drill for it. And this is so close to the surface they can open pit mine it. So this is the area where they've mentioned before, it's, which is the size of Florida that they've got that's going to be, that's leased out. You know, it's the size of Florida and England. And here, from this part here where our other part of reserve is, that north, all these dots, which I placed on here, is all leased out for uranium, as, uh, as Lionel said. And this is where they had uranium in before in the past. Water from here makes its way and comes out right here. Now here's the story. The tar sands is oil and gas. A lot of it's oil. A big percentage of that oil goes to the United States. A big percentage of that, that oil goes to the States goes to the U.S. military. In fact, the military have one of their own um, um, refineries right on their base. And the oil is coming right from here, right to that base. Now, that oil is used for their army tanks, their jeeps, whatever gas you're going to need. Now, the uranium. 
Uranium yellow cakes are used to fuel nuclear power subs, aircraft carriers, and nuclear power plants, and radioisotopes. One thing they don't tell you that other things uranium is used for is weapons grade plutonium. Mm -hmm. So, not only are we going to be fueling their tanks and, fu and arming their uh, and fueling their uh, subs, we're going to be arming them too. All from this little area right here is going to be fueling the war machine, the arming the war machine for the purpose of killing people in other places of the world whom we've never met and aren't even our enemy. They haven't even done anything to me and this guy. Innocent people. Innocent yeah. people. Bombing them from afar like terrorists. You know, they're, it's what it is. This terrorist. These guys are coming into our homeland, invading it, taking the resources. Because of the, what's happening to the resources, animals and now people are dying from it. And the government's allowing this to happen. That's why we say it's a form of genocide. And since it's a rare cancer, which is biological, it's a form of biological warfare. It's smallpox happening all over again. The government allowing people to die. Smallpox was like a, was like warfare. They sent in these these contaminated blankets in the hopes of killing off the Indians. Yeah. Well, how many years ago we're still here? Now we're to pick up a new fight. Again, biological warfare. We are cancers in our community. We again, they're trying to kill us off, and they're making money by doing it. You know, like Canada, I was looking for the terrorist threat. You know, and in my eyes, Canada. They are the terrorists. You know, they're, they're, they're terrorizing us right now because right now, like, uh, there's a lot of anxiety and fear to go out in the land and go out and fish, hunt fish and trap. You know, because of the fact that uh, the water could be contaminated, the, the animals could be sick. You know, so they're always looking for a terrorist threat. So all they have to do is look in the mirror. You know, they look in the mirror and they found our terrorists right there. You know, Canada, the states, that's a terrorist in, in my opinion, mm -hmm. and they have the audacity to call us terrorists. You know, they kind of single us out. You know, and uh, you know, and, and kind of labeled uh, First Nation people as terrorist threats to industry. You know, in, in, in the meantime, they're terrorizing the, our, our elders, and now our kids are starting to get terrified. You know, so so anybody who votes for, for a prime minister, anybody who votes for a mayor, are contributing to our death as well. You know, so they're involved with that terrorist activity, in my opinion. You know, so anybody who, who places their vote, whether it be for a mayor, for, for an MP, for, for, for the prime minister, for the president, for whoever, anybody who, who places a vote, you know, they're, they're contributing to, to our death. They're allowing it to happen because Canada and the states are allowing this to happen because they want every single ounce of oil, uranium, gold, diamonds, anything that's in that area. They want every every ounce of it at the cost of our lives, you know. So that's why uh, I want my kids, my grandchildren, to come up here and tell a completely different story about this map. I want them to tell us a total success story. I want mm -hmm. them to say that the yeah industry they were here at one time and now they're out there cleaning up the mess that they made so far. You know, so they're going to be out here for another couple hundred years to clean up the mess that they made already. You know, so I vow that my grandchildren will tell a total opposite story that I'm telling right now. There's no honor in telling you our people are doomed. There's no honor in telling you all this that's happening is going to kill everything off. You know, there's, where's the honor in, in, in doing this mm -hmm. and having to explain this? And now in our community of what we're calling Ground Zero, you know, it's, there's me and this guy. That has this understanding and the knowledge of this, and the rest of the people kind of don't have that. It's almost like we're taking on the headache, and mm -hmm. they don't have to worry about it because we are. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that we have to face. And there's no honor in doing that. Mm -hmm. And passing on this fight and understanding of what we understand, what we explain to you today, is to explain to the next generations of what we're doing, mm -hmm. and hopefully that their attitude is going to change the way things go in the future, so that our oil and our uranium ain't killing people in other, in other nations. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then whom we're, we're people of peace, but yet they're taking the resources from our backyards under our, right under our feet to kill and to get there and jump in their tanks and drive there and then shoot them. You know, like, which, which one of our First Nations? Where did they tell us in all those deals that, they're, that, that's what was, that they were gonna do with it? Yeah. You know, and, in, and in even so, if it's to share the land according to the treaties, I can almost estimate close to, say, $10 trillion or more, probably more has been made off of that. And how come the First Nations of the regions are so poor if we're supposed to share everything? Yeah. If that was a fact and all the stuff and they're following with the treaties, all the, all the First Nations would be like the Saudis who would be driving Maseratis yeah. and flying helicopters and, yeah. and living it up like we should be. I think with the water too is that, uh, you know, like, um the, the amount that they extract, you know, like uh, here we are paying for our own water, 
you know, but they get all that water for free. You know, they're stealing. We can't go to areas to hunt. Yeah. We can't do anything that's going to allow us to practice our traditional rights. Yeah. That's infringement on our treaty. That's breaking the treaty. They want us all dead. You know, like uh, you know, like I said earlier, like uh, they tried, you know, through 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 uh, the Indian Wars before, you know, and we still we still survived. They tried to get us all sick with the blankets, you know, and we still survived. They tried to make us all white, you know. They tried to make us all colonized, you know, residential schools. Still survived. So now they figure, okay, now what what better way to kill these Indians than to uh, poison what's best for them? Poison their mother Earth. We'll poison their mother. We'll get them all sick. That's how we'll kill them off. You know, and right now they're they're slowly slowly succeeding. You know, so we have to counteract that uh, that attack and, and start fighting back and attack back. You know, because you can't just simply kill a man and end his news. He has to kill his spirit, and the spirit of the people is the land. This is our sacred site. This is our sacredness. This is everything that's here, mm -hmm. right from the air to the ground to the water and everything in between the plants, the animals, the fin, the wings. All that is what what we're protecting. And that's our sacredness. And this is what's being threatened. So when you ask us, where's the sacred site? Just look and breathe. Have a go aside on a hill and see how far your eyes can see. Mm -hmm. And see that lake and water and breathe that air. That's our sacredness. Because we're nomadic people. Mm -hmm. The Dene people are nomadic. We travel all over. All over. Where we, where we travel, that's our sacredness. And that's what we're protecting. And that's what they don't understand. They just want that, they just want that dollar. You know, they don't care what kind of mineral, what happens. They, it's the, in the end result, it's that dollar bill they get. It could be oil shale, diamonds, uranium, water. They don't care. It's in the bottom line, the government is getting paid for it. And that's it. They can care less whether yeah. he, he dies or I die. One less dead Indian for them to worry about. I would say, had the river flown south the other way, I guarantee you those mines wouldn't be there, or they'd be the most environmentally friendly, safest plants in the world. You know, but you know, their people aren't going to be affected because the river's coming our way. Cause that's the way the Creator made it. You know, so therefore uh, they got nothing to worry about. They're like, okay, nobody's going to die. <laughs> only, only Indians. You know, just uh, just the Indian up north are going to die. So. Had yeah. the river, if the river flows south, you know, I guarantee you that it'd be a totally different story. Like, like you know, it's like when I said earlier, trying to kill our spirit by killing the land. And when you think about what the rare cancers being found in Fort Chip, now this is a, a thing I always say, and I'm going to repeat, is that it's so rare, it's that one in 100,000 people like, attract this thing because that's how rare it is. We have 1,100 people here with how many cases? seven to eight to nine to ten one is too many for the number of people for the population now you think of population and numbers and how this thing works one in one hundred thousand if you've got five and a, a, and a thousand eleven hundred five of them with this cancer now you take that number to put it to a major city like Edmonton Edmonton's got some two million people you're gonna find twelve thousand people dead, dying. You're going to find blocks of people, mm -hmm. sub suburbia areas of blocks of people dead and dying in their homes from, from, a, from a, a resource, from what's happening there. Last time I checked, that's an epidemic. It's a full-fledged epidemic. And you compare that to how it is in Fort Chip with less than 2,000 people attracting a rare cancer where only one in 100,000 can get it, that's genocide. Government knows as long as it happened, that's genocide. It's warfare. Like I said, biological warfare. And it's the only way I can describe it, and the only way I can try to portray to anything that's going to make sense of anything, of why we do what we do, why we believe what we do, why we're protecting all this so that it stays as green as this mm -hmm. and not a black desert. This being 30% of Canada's greenhouse gases, by 2020 to equal every car in Canada for greenhouse gases, now, global warming, um, climate crisis going on right now, how much of that is coming from here, which is going to affect the rest of the planet. It's just a matter of time where in that ripple, what's happening here is going to happen to the rest of the world. It's just a matter of time. Yeah. And unless you do something about it or the way uh, we do things doesn't change, if that don't change, you're all good as dead. Yeah. You know, everybody. everybody. I mean, what's, who would want to live in a future like that where you have to fight for water? Yeah. Where you have to, 
no air to breathe, yeah. no land to go on. Are they, you think the cities are going to be providing that for very long? The cities get their food from farmers mm -hmm. outside the cities. How long before that farmer runs out of water? Exactly. How long before it, it gets so hot that it dries up they can't grow anything? It means the people in the city are going to be doomed. Where do they get their gas and oil from and the, and the gas tanks and the, and the um, gas stations in the cities? From here. And that eventually, for them to drive their car, is going to what kill them. And this is how it's going to go. And that's how we think. We think in 500 year cycles, not 50 year leases. Okay, so we had this map made so that it would show all the oil sands leases. And believe it or not, these leases go over the river. So here's Fort McMurray, and here's where the river flows. The blue is where the river is, but looking at this, you can tell that it's been overleased and um, it's covered with tar sands. And this river flows from the south, which comes from the Columbia Ice Fields, which is in the Rocky Mountains. Now, in between here and there, there's farm fields with pesticides, um, pulp mills, plants where they, where they bring the trees and the pulp mills spill the stuff right into the water. And this stuff too is also is also pollution. Comes up, then it gets goes through this area here. Where they have tailing ponds and extraction and all this poisonous water and they're allowing back into the water system. And it's just flowing north. Here is where all the uranium stuff is happening. The mine that was here, that water flows into Old Fort Bay. Coming up the Athabasca River is the toxic sledge from the tar sands. All this goes to Lake Athabasca, right by Fort Chip. And where do we get our drinking water from? The lake. Now, would I need a scientist or somebody to come and tell me, why do you think people in Chip are getting sick? <laughs> you know, so like, just by that explanation, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to say, well, uh, I can almost, guess why you're getting sick, but I won't have any proof of it. Well, I don't know. Let's go take a water sample. Let's go to my radius and take a sample of the snow, a sample of the water, and see how bad that is. Let's go here to Taylor's Pond and take a sample of that and see how toxic that is. That's uranium and radiation, PAHs, water systems, that all flow past right here. Now, just by explaining that, I tell that to my daughter who's eight years old, and she's like, Dad, you know what? We're, we're dying, getting sick because of what's coming out of tar sands. Plus, uranium that's been there around the same times when tar sands started. These two things right there, both allowed by our government to go on, and they knew right from the beginning what was in these what was in the toxic, what was in the tailing, what was in the waste. It was the waste, they knew. That's why they allowed them to have um, tailing ponds, so they can let the waste sit there. Tailing ponds, let the waste sit there. What are they gonna do with it? 30 years later, they don't know. They're gonna let it sit there until, until who knows what happens. So say if they get a big, uh, lots of rain one year, and these, and these things get breached, which they do. Talking about water, all that toxic stuff going back into the system. What are they going to do? They're probably going to relo try to relocate the people. Uh, they're going to migrate into somewhere else, somewhere from where this isn't going to happen. That's what, that's what I would foresee the future to be if they're letting all this go through. Will be get those people out of there. Stop letting them die. Let's go move them over here or let's move them to the cities and give them jobs and let them help, to sh help us destroy the land. Let, or make us help them destroy the land and become more further instruments of warfare. You know, and we already were. I came from there. I used to work for Syncrude Canada. I was an instrument of warfare, a damn good one too. But I quit and left and came here.